I left um, having spiritual conversations with people and, and just being able to hear about what God's doing, questions that they might have in their heart. Even this morning, had some questions. Hey, Pastor, what's the Bible say about this? It's good to be able to uh, have those moments and talk about the Word of God and discussing it together with one another and building one another up. And so I encourage you, church doesn't start at 1030. Church starts when you get here. Now, I know to some that's, that's, that's 11, but, uh, but, but church starts when you get here because it's, when you, it's your part that, that you connect spiritually and, and we are able to build together what God wants to accomplish and wants to do in this day and age. And worship is so important. It's, it's not songs that we just like. It is allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to us through those songs and minister to us. And, you know, verses were just running through my heart when we were worshiping there this morning. I was thinking... Of John 16 33 when Jesus said these things have I spoken unto you that in me you may have peace isn't that wonderful and he went on and clarified that and he said in the world you will have tribulation anybody got that prophecy down yet in this world you're gonna have tribulation test trials and problems are to come your way. This isn't my sermon, this is my message. This is uh, just your pastor talking to you for a little bit. Jesus promised us peace because he knew what we were going to face. Just because you're facing trials, tribulations, and problems in your life doesn't mean God has left you. It just needs you need the peace of God to be able to get you through those things. Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you. He's given us his word that in, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. I don't know about you, I need that verse once in a while in my life. Just a reminder that it's not me overcoming the world, it's Jesus has overcome the world and has given us the peace to know that we have the victory in Jesus Christ in our life. Just a reminder that I will go through some tests, some trials, and some troubles. Anybody got some oh me's and woes out there today that you can talk about? But folks, we need to stop talking about how bad things are and start talking about, but my God is able. But my God is able. My God is able to get me through this. Either Jesus' word is true here or you can't believe he's your savior. Because if he lied in one part, then how can you trust him in some other part? But he prepared us so that we can be a people that we can go through the struggles of this life and we can go through it victoriously. Another quick scripture that just came to mind when we were worshiping there in, uh, in, you can just write it down or just listen if you would please, Hebrews chapter 13, Hebrews 13 uh, and verse 6 says, so we boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear. Could you simply say that? I will not fear. Now could you say it like it's the word of the Lord? I will not fear what man can do to me. I will not fear what man can do to me. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. You get that part down, then you can be able to handle what men try to do to you, what this world is trying to, to, to try to defeat our lives. But I want you to know the Lord is your helper. And turn to your neighbor and just tell him, you need help. You, you need, you need help. But thank God we've got a helper. Amen. We already have a helper, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. And whatever we need to do, whatever God's called us to do, whatever obstacle before us, God is our helper to be able to make it through. And, and we can do it with his help because he is the greater one in our life. And so I just want to encourage you. I want to build you up today, let you know that, there, that we're all going through some struggles. We're all facing some trials. And yours are more predominant to you because they're yours. But I want you to know that we need to focus on the helper in our life. I like what John Hagee said, stop making your problems your career. Let's start letting God be seen in our lives. We're going to go through some struggles and some problems. I'm not making light of them. Please don't misunderstand me. I have compassion. I got struggles too. We got, all have problems. And we have struggles. Yours may be even more significant right now and maybe even greater in, in, in number right now. But I want you to know they're not greater than God and his help that he wants to bring into our life. Heavenly Father, we just ask as we shift and, and move from this moment into the, the message that I feel compelled of the Spirit to share today, that we will be a people that are receptive to hear the word of the Lord, 
that we are receptive to receive the orders from our, our, our leader, the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, that we'll be open and receptive to receive the word that the Holy Spirit desires to seed in our heart to produce the fruit of righteousness that you desire in our lives. Lord, forgive us for selfishness. Forgive us for being so consumed with our feelings, our situation, and our problem. Help us to be able to say, regardless of what comes against us, the Lord has a plan to use me to accomplish your plan, your will, in this day for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. There's one scripture that I want to base my message on today, and uh, it's back in the Old Testament. If you need to take a few moments to find it in Nehemiah chapter 2, um, take a few moments. If you need to look at the front of your Bible to find out where the book of Nehemiah is, go ahead. The cheat sheet is there. It's what it's there for. Use it. Look for it. Look up the, this one scripture we're going to look up in just a few moments in Nehemiah chapter 2, and, uh, and to be able to focus on this. Most of us have uh, heard the story of Nehemiah. Most of us have heard that he rebuilt the wall in Jerusalem, was the leader there to go back and to do it. And it's a tremendous story. It's an amazing uh, prophetic story here of what God can do. And there's much we could learn from it. Um, and yet there just seems to be one kind of, uh, we, just, we need to just touch the tip of the steer, spear today. And instead of talking about the whole construction of, of all of the book and of, of Nehemiah and all that went on and all the analogies that we can pull from it, um, there's just, this, just something very specific that I feel the Lord wants to stir in our hearts today. And it basically is, is it, it, it oftentimes when you look at the book of Nehemiah, we, we come across the phrase, Rise and build. Arise and build. But folks, after meditating on this a little bit more, uh, the emphasis I think the Holy Spirit wants to put on our hearts today is arise and rebuild. There's areas in our life, personally. There are areas in our spiritual ministry as a church. There are areas in our culture and community that need to be rebuilt that have been uh, tore down. We have been attacked by the enemy, uh, that we've suffered loss in our hope, in our faith, in our confidence. We, we seem to have shrunk in our significance or our, our emphasis on what God wants to accomplish. We have become somewhat content with just survival in some areas instead of taking new, new, new territory for the kingdom of God. Now let me tell you real quickly as we're going through this, I'm not just talking about, I'm not talking about rebuilding a, a physical wall. I'm not talking about building a building. I'm not talking about anything. I'm talking about spiritually in our lives, fortifying ourselves after going through some very difficult times. We've gone through difficult times, many of us individually. Some of us, you know, all of us have gone through some difficult in the last couple of years here as a church and, and talking with other pastors is how do we do ministry now? What is the direction that we do? And there's a lot of questions on that, on, on what are we supposed to do and how are we supposed to do it? What's it look like in the, in the, after COVID? What's it like? I want you to know it's the same as it was before COVID and that's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in our life. The change should not be in our, uh, in our emphasis because of the situation that we're facing. It should always be the same. Last night I had the privilege of going and hearing an incredible man of God that has been used to spread revival through his, his home nation and has lived a consistent life. I, I think it's wonderful when you can look at somebody who's been serving Jesus for 50 years and still on fire for God and still doing it for the right purposes in your life. A couple of the things that I took away from what he was sharing was basically have a passion for Jesus and a passion for the lost. Uh, that's what we need in our life more than anything. Uh, we, we allow problems and, and hurts and attacks to get our, our focus off of what our passion should be on. Our passion should not be on recovering our lives to the comfort that we once had, but our passion should be constantly pursuing Jesus and reaching the lost that are around us. And Nehemiah is one that that passion was stirred on the inside of him. Of course, not for Jesus. He's back in the Old Testament. But an illustration for us. 
that when we see things that have been destroyed by the adversary, that it must be a stirring on the inside of us that our God is able to rebuild. Our God is able to, to bring back. Our God is able to be glorified, but he's going to take someone like me and you to step out of our comfort, to step out of our own preservation, to step out of a, of a conversation of just somebody ought to do something to a place where, God, it's about you and your ability so you can use even someone like me to be able to accomplish what needs to be done. Stirring that passion on the inside of us. And, and Nehemiah here is someone who's going back to rebuild the walls. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 20. The, 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 and I know that by some Bible scholars, they will scold me for taking a scripture in somewhat out of context here and uh, because I don't read the whole text and give you the whole ba historical background and everything here, but just uh, taking this verse, and by no means do I feel like I am misusing the Scripture. I think it's also interesting how many times Jesus quoted one phrase from the Old Testament without talking about the whole Scripture, the text that it was in. And so I sense today, with a little bit of permission, even though we can see that it is verified through other portions of Scripture, in, in Nehemiah 2.20, it gives us this powerful statement. It says, Nehemiah replies, The God of heaven will help us to succeed. New Living Translation. The God of heaven will help us to succeed. He goes on and says, We, his servants, will start rebuilding this wall. And he's talking, of course, to some of the other individuals that were around there that did not have a covenant with God. But you have no share, you no legal right, nor historical claim in Jerusalem. As I was allowing the Holy Spirit to really stir this verse on the inside of me, it reminds us that we are called by God to, do, to rebuild. If you talk to most contractors, they will tell you they would rather build new than to remodel. Because you don't know what you're going to get into. And for us as believers, when we go to help rebuild our lives, rebuild our faith, rebuild our hope, rebuild our confidence in God's word, rebuild our trust in his ability to move supernaturally, it, we oftentimes re, we hold back from that because there's some things that he is going to reveal in there about us that we don't even want to have to deal with at the time. It's much easier to blame the devil for what happened. It's much easier to blame other people for what happened. And the blame may rightfully so be in some of those situations. But the fact is, we are where we are. We are where we are. I don't know what mess you're in right now, but you are where you are. And the question is, are you going to trust God to help you to rebuild and to get out of this situation or sit there in the rubble and the trash and the destruction and just blame someone else and just live a life of just survival when God has called us to do so much more in our life. It's our job to rebuild what has been torn down. I remember, uh, you know, as a, a, a grandfather, you have the privilege to be able to do a lot of things that you probably never do for your own kids. Um, and I remember when my one grandson, he got a bunch of those, uh, those uh, cardboard, um, cardboard uh, bricks. You know those cardboard bricks that you you put together. How many of you know that they do not come assembled and that, that, that you have to fold every one of those cardboard bricks up and you get it all folded up and then, and then you, your grandkid wants you to build something and so you, you build a wall. Do you know what they love to do when you have this thing all built up? Is they love to be Godzilla and come in there and knock down that wall. And then they want you to rebuild it again. My job was to rebuild the wall so that Godzilla could knock it down every time. Well, I want you to know as believers, regardless of why your faith has been damaged, regardless of who has attacked and hurt your hope in God. Regardless of whether it was the adversary himself that has come and still, still taken away the, the authority of God's word in your heart, it's time to be a rebuilder. And it has to start in your heart first. Nehemiah says the God of heaven is going to help us to succeed. 
Don't misunderstand what I'm about to say. Stop looking for people to solve your problem and start looking to God to be the source to be your deliverance in your life. He loves you. And he's the only one that's really able to help you to accomplish what he wants to do. It has to start with rebuilding on the inside of you hope and faith in God. And then as he gets you in a place where you are in a rebuilding mode, then you are able then to go out and we can start to rebuild ministry that's been tore down. We can start to rebuild other people's lives that have been hurt. We can start to rebuild community and culture around us and be able to be a force at the enemy. And we can say, you have no part in what we're doing here. We are furthering the kingdom of God. And it was about 14 years ago now when we moved over here to this property that we said, we will put the church on the very gates of hell and it will not prevail against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time for us to rise up with a fresh sense that God wants to do some rebuilding in our lives and he wants to do it through us. He wants to do it through every one of us. The big struggle that most people have is the question of how. How is God going to do this? Nehemiah goes back to Jerusalem and the people are, are living in a just survival mentality. The enemy is gloating over what has happened there. The walls are all torn down. The gates have been burnt up. There's no worship that's going on in, the, in what should be the, the temple and the magnitude of the temple that was going on. And Nehemiah comes back and he starts to rebuild hope and faith in the people's hearts that there is still a God in heaven that can transform and can change the situation that we're in. There's still a God, and we might not know how he's going to do it, but we've got the who is going to do it. The real question is not how is it going to happen. My question to you today is who do you think is going to give you the deliverance? Who is going to be the source in your life? Who is going to be the one that's going to be the, the cause of your success? Is it your own, own intelligence? Is it because we can get enough people together to do it? Is it because we can take up a big enough offering to do it? Is it because we get over a particular pandemic in this world? It's always got to be a, a, the answer is who is our source? And when I have confidence in the who, I don't have to know the how. I can have trust in his ability to bring his will to pass. Every one of the synoptic gospels records the words of Jesus where he said, with man it is impossible, but with God, could you go with me? But with God all things are possible. Do we believe that? Does that need to be rebuilt in our life? Does that need to be stirred on the inside of us? The great apostle Paul that was more mistreated than anyone else we have in the New Testament other than Jesus himself. Beaten, shipwrecked, stoned, imprisoned, lied about, tracked down. Uh, 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 just everything that you could think of be thrown at him. And yet he was the one that said in Romans 8.31, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can successfully stand against us? There can be a lot that will, can be against us, but I like to emphasize, emphasis there, who can successfully stand against us when God is with us. Church, I want to encourage you, as Nehemiah had to do to his people, is you've got to get faith back in your heart like you've never had before. You've got to rebuild that, fortify that faith on the inside of you. It is the shield of faith that quenches all the fiery darts in your life. Faith doesn't stop the attack. It stops the effects of the attack from destroying you. We've got to build faith on the inside of us in these days because, folks, if this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith that we have in our life. And faith stirring on the in inside of us is so very important. You know, uh, I, I, it, last week I was was not able to be here, and, and thank you, Lisa, for doing the great job that you, you did. Always makes me a little nervous from job security when Lisa ministers, because she always does such a good job. She's kind of a package deal there. But, 
but you know, uh, I, I, uh, I, I wasn't feeling well, so I went through and, and uh, had the, the, the test taken, and they said I had COVID, so I called the doctor and talked to the doctor, and the doctor said, yeah, all these symptoms, okay, you've got COVID, we've got some wonderful medication that will help you. Ah, well, you know, you know if I got this, I'll do anything, get over this, but we can't give it to you because we don't have it. <laughs> well, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. But he said, you know, if you call over to the hospital, maybe the hospital, maybe they would have some. So uh, we called the hospital and we said, uh, you know, they say I have COVID and yet they say that uh, um, they don't have the medicine and so call over there to you and maybe you could help us. And the hospital said, okay, we'll put your name down. We can guarantee you this. We will not get back to you today. Maybe tomorrow. And so finally, they, they called back the next day, and they uh, said, so, uh, okay, so you've got COVID, you've got these symptoms, uh, okay, um, uh, are you overweight? Um, do you have any other uh, uh, ailments? Um, do, you, do you smoke? Do you do these kind of things? And I said, no, I've, I've tried to take care of my body. Well, that's wonderful. You're in too good a shape to be able to get the medicine that we offer. <laughs> well, this is wonderful news that you've given me here. Give me some candy bars. Uh, we'll, but what I'm saying is this, folks. We've got to trust in the Lord in our life. The world doesn't always have the answer. And even when they've got, they have limited resources in what they can do in our life. We've got to rebuild our faith that God is able and willing to... So you know what? The, the doctor didn't have anything he could do for me. Hospital didn't have anything that he could do. So I went to, the, just got in my bed and crawled up there and just started meditating on Jesus who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I just started meditating on the promises of God in my life and meditating on the word of the Lord. And the, you know, they might say you've got to isolate, but I want you to know that the Lord is with you wherever that you're at. And sometimes it's best to hear his voice more than any other voice in our life. Just started rebuilding my faith, not in questioning, God, why am I sick? I started saying, I'm just thankful that because I know the Lord is my healer, I'm going to put my confidence in him more than ever in Jesus' name. And this too will pass, and I'm going to fight this thing, I'm going to stand against this thing, I'm going to resist this thing in my life, and I'm going to build back my faith. I'm not looking, you know, uh, is there any deep, dark sin in my life? As far as I know, there's not. Uh, and there's no reason to, to hinder. And I'm not questioning God, why didn't you heal me? Why didn't you heal me? I'm thinking he is the healer. He is the healer. And putting my focus over on who he is. And confident in his ability to work supernaturally. Building back on the inside of me the faith that I need, not just for myself, but so that we can share that faith with others. There's a world out there that needs your hope and faith stirred on the inside of you. Nehemiah went back, and in one sense, folks, the people at that place had everything that they really needed to be able to rebuild those walls. When they tore down those stone walls, the wall, it didn't dissolve, you understand. Those stones were still laying there. The timbers that they needed to rebuild the gates that had been burnt had been growing in the, in the wilderness and were waiting for someone to come and to tear them and take them and to rebuild the gates that were there. Resources were in people's lives to be able to finance and to build this back. When Nehemiah returned, he had everything he needed to rebuild the walls except hope in people's hearts. You know, I look around the world and we see all of the resources that we have available, all the stuff that's there, and yet I see hope dwindling in people's hearts. I see faith flickering, dimming in people's hearts. And of all times, folks, this is where we need to be burning the brightest. Of all times, this is where we need to be confessing the word of God like we've never done it before. We need to be like Nehemiah and when we go back and say the God of all heaven is going to help us to succeed. We are going to succeed not because of the right person in the White House. 
We are going to succeed not because uh, the World Health Organization tells us that a pandemic is over or that we have a solution for it. We're going to succeed not because the, of, the, uh, 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 of the inflation rate might start to go down. Probably won't. Uh, we are going to succeed because there is a God in heaven and he is the one that is going to be our source of help and hope in our lives. We've got to get our confidence on who he is and what he wants to do through his church. We can take this to the church level, but the problem I have oftentimes, when we start to talk about the church, we think other people are going to do what God wants to do through you. We start to think about, well, there'll be enough of us, or maybe there's not enough of us. We start to think about, well, maybe someone else will take care of that or someone else will get involved in that. When we need to understand God wants to use every single one of us in this day and age. And we've got to have a stirring on the inside of us of confidence, of hope to rebuild, to rebuild lives. The enemy has been like a, a mad animal that's just seemingly going through our world that is just ripping things apart tearing things apart, just bringing devastation and, 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 and like we've never seen uh, uh, in our lifetime. And it's a great time that when sin abounds, that grace shows up and abounds even more in our lives. But are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? Are we going to have the confidence to trust in the Almighty God to work in our lives? It's time for us to, to arise and rebuild in our life, first of all. Are we willing at this time to say, no matter what it looks like, God has a better life for me than this right here. He's got something better that he wants to do in my life. It's not just about comfort, it's about purpose. Are we willing at this point to say, I have all the help that I need with God because God is with me. I may be the only one in the room I may be, I can only imagine how the Apostle Paul felt at times when he would be chained up in the inner dungeon, when he would be isolated in, a, in an area, when he was being uh, taken by ship to, to, a, to a place and kept in, in chains for a time. I can only imagine his level of feeling of isolation, feeling of rejection, feeling like everybody's turned their back on me. And yet there was this in, internal a combustion of faith that was on the inside of him. If God be for me, who can be against me? It doesn't matter the onslaught of the enemy and his attacks. It doesn't matter if it seems like the, the most powerful governmental system of the world and religious organization is against me at the same time. I've got the God of all heaven at work in my life. I have a purpose and a direction. Are we willing to say, that my problem is not my focus, but to bring glory to God in the way that I live the rest of my life? Am I willing to say that I have confidence in Him to be able to use me? There still is a God in heaven, and He still desires to work in our life. He still is desiring to work in every one of our lives. And it's not going to be based on our comfort, it's going to be more based on our sacrifice. Have you been reading your Bible? Have you been spending time in meditation of the Word of God? As we said, Eastern meditation empties your brain so that you can have, or your mind so that you easily have demonic influence. But Bible meditation fills your mind with faith and confidence and hope and so that you have a new way of thinking regardless of what you're facing. Are you spending time hearing the Word over and over on the inside of you so your faith is being built up? That we understand that the enemy, the enemy causes things to look so bleak around us. The world looks bad. We've got superpowers that are, that are in tension right now around the world. Russia and China that are, are just seemingly on that brink. North Korea that you just never know what's going to go on there. Nigeria that's still the most dangerous place in the world to be a Christian. And yet it's got some of the most amazing moves of God that's going on. Folks, it is time for us to realize these are the last days of our life and that we must arise and build something for the kingdom of God. And if Jesus tarries, it will outlast our lives because it is so great. It will outlast what we may experience, but it will be something that will bring glory and honor to him in this day and age. 
I'm simply saying today that if God could move in the days of Nehemiah, he can move in our day today. I'm simply saying that if a man like Nehemiah could trust God to rebuild walls out of rubbish in the midst of a time where the enemies were surrounding them, that there is a God that can work in our lives. And we got to start looking at the rubbish in our life and saying, God can redeem this thing. God can bring it back for his purpose. God can defy the enemy because of what he can do. And oftentimes, the more insignificant we look, the more glory God gets out of this situation. We look to him, and we have simple confidence in what God is able and willing to do in our life. How are you looking at your life right now? We can all look at the world, and we can say the world is in a mess. How is your life right now? If you look at your life, and you say, it's a mess, Pastor. It's just ruins. It just seems like just like everything is falling apart around me. I'm not saying we don't acknowledge the way things are. I'm just saying when we rebuild our faith, we realize that it's not over yet when God is at work in our life. We realize that God is able, just like Grandpa's able to rebuild the walls. And just like I take those little cardboard little cardboard uh, uh, blocks and able to rebuild that wall. It was no effort whatsoever with these kind of muscles to be able to take those cardboard boxes and build a wall. And it is no effort for your God to rebuild in your life. It is not difficult for God. Stop focusing on the how and focus on the who. You know this verse, but I'll read it to you. Jeremiah 32, 27. Jeremiah 32, 27. You can write the reference down. I, I, I implore you. I challenge you. I, I beg of you to memorize some of these verses and get them on the inside of you. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah 32, 27, the Amplified says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard? Is there anything too extraordinary? Is there anything too difficult? You will remember that once this world was all in darkness and chaos, and the Spirit of God was hovering over this earth, and the Father God spoke the living word, he sent his word, and transformed and changed the chaos into paradise. Not what we have right now. This is the effects of sin. This is the effects of of, of thousands of years of sin and sinful acts. This is the result of thousands of years of the God of this world system, Satan, compressing and changing and transforming. But I want you to know that when God in his original work He created everything, and it was good. It was very good because of who was able to do the creative work. If he could do that, and if he is the same God, and if Jesus is the same living word, and if the Holy Spirit is still the Spirit of God that is hovering over our lives, you may feel like your life is in chaos right now, but what a wonderful time to let the Almighty God of heaven to speak his success into your life and to be able to say God is able to do something, that that he is able to bring his glory to pass in my life. I'm not going to give up on God. God, and I'm not going to give in to the way this thing is going in my life. I'm going to believe that he has a plan to bring redemption and reconciliation to pass in my life. The question is, do you need to rebuild hope and faith in your life? Do you need to rebuild your confidence in who God is and what he wants to do in your life? God is still looking for people of faith that he can demonstrate himself in their life. God is not moved by our problems. He is moved by our faith in his ability to solve those problems. God is not moved by our tears. 
God is not moved by our crying and our whining. Here, folks, whether you realize it or not, because some of us evidently don't, God's not moved by your complaining either. God is moved by our confidence and our faith in him and a trust that sees what is but is not satisfied when we have a God who can do all things and to be able to say, this may be the way things are, but there is a God that can transform and change. And there's some rebuilding that's going to go on. There's going to be some transformation that's going to happen. And the adversary is not going to be able to stop it in my life. Quick scripture over in the New Testament that I think is important for us to be reminded of in the Hebrews 11.1. 1. We're talking about arise and rebuild. We're talking about walking into a hopeless devastated, destructive, ruined situation and be able to say there is a God that can still move supernaturally. There is a God that can still, if you're breathing, can move in your life. There's a God that actually can still even raise the dead. Again, with the gentleman that the, the, went and was able to hear and, and its testimonies of people even being raised from the dead. Well, do you believe that? Well, I don't know. Well, then evidently you need to rebuild your faith because if you don't believe that God can raise the dead, I don't know what your faith is in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, but I think he proved he can raise the dead. And in a dead situation, we need to look at it. Now, we can't make people do the right thing. We can't make people follow after God. We can't make people come to church. We can't make people do the right thing. But you're responsible for you to be an example of what can be. And when we start to be that example, like Nehemiah, to step into a situation and start to be a person of faith and hope, a person that starts to talk different than the world around you, starts to be able to look at a situation and be able to say, the God of heaven is going to bring success into our life. The hand of the Lord is going to be upon us, regardless of what we do. I don't care what hand is against us, the hand of the Lord is upon us and he's going to bring us through this situation. I'm already trusting in God and he's going to have all that we need to be able to get us from where we are to where we need to be. God is able along the way. When we start talking like that, we start believing like that, it starts to affect other people around us. It starts to transform us. It starts to transform our church. You see, if it doesn't happen here, folks, I am not a motivational speaker. I'm not a life coach. I'm a pastor. I'm just here to be able to share what the word of the Lord says into our life so that we're living like him. I'm not just telling you get up in the morning and give yourself three, you can do it. I want you to know that there's a God that is with us to help us to be able to do whatever we need to do in our life. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the King James is, Therefore faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This translation I have with this here is the Amplified Translation, and it says, now faith is. You got to have faith. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth used to say, if you, need, if you wait till you need faith to get it, you're too late. If you wait till you need faith. That's why as your pastor, I'm encouraging you to read your Bible daily, a lot. Meditate on that. Even this 21 days uh, uh, of uh, prayer and fasting, this 20, 21 days, and we're going through this devotional together. Folks, it doesn't seem like there's, a, it's a, not a long thing, but if you'll meditate on it, it ha every day there's something that's changing us, something that's challenging us, something spiritual that's being emplaced on the inside of us. I, I want you to be here on Wednesday nights, not because I think my, my sermons are great, it's because we need one another to be able to connect and have a spiritual impact with one another. Your kids need to be in church. They need to be under an influence. You need to be involved in what's going on. If you only come to church when you're doing something, then it's difficult for you all, uh, to, to really sometimes be in the service and to be able to receive what's going on in there. We need to be involved. We need to be active. We need to be connecting. We need to be able to be building our faith. And when we're building our faith, it is, it's, an, it's an active thing. It's not just, oh, I can memorize a bunch of scriptures. It's the Holy Spirit has brought those scriptures. You see, the helper helps us to understand what the word of the Lord means in our life. It's bringing that word alive to us. And then when it's alive on the inside of us, we want to share it with somebody else. 
We've got some inside information from the Holy Spirit about a particular verse, and we want to build somebody else's faith up with it. That's where we come together and encourage one another. And I, I, folks, you don't have to just come on Wednesday nights and just on Sunday mornings. Folks, get together on a regular basis. Call one another, encourage one another, build one another up. It's what we've got to do. Now faith is. It is what? It is the assurance, the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for. Faith and hope, they go together. That's why I'm saying, folks, people's hope has been tore down. People's faith has been tore down. We're just kind of hoping nothing more happens. We're just hoping that, that this thing gets over. But where our hope really needs to be, folks, is in Almighty God and His abilities in our life. Our hope needs to be built back up. Hope that we're confident we're, we're expectation on the inside of us of what God's doing. I've got expectation that God wants to move in your life. My expectation, my hope is not just so that every Sunday pastor has some incredible message that you want to come back and hear again. No, my hope is that, that God's working supernaturally through your life and you've got messages, you've got stories, you've got testimonies of what God's doing in your life. My hope is not that I have a long prayer list that you've turned into me. My hope is that I got a short prayer list because you've already prayed and seen the victory in your life. That, that, that I, my hope, my expectation, what, what I'm seeing is not just a few more people coming to church. My expectation is God moving supernaturally through your life. Your life is rebuilt. That God wants to use you. And faith starts to then come alive on the inside of that. It, it, hope is like the blueprint that you look at. Faith is in saying, let's go do it. Let's start to build this thing. Let's start to build it, make it happen. Let's start to see what God wants to do in our lives individually and corporately as we come together. And we start to build something for the kingdom of God. Hope is when Nehemiah walked into this town and he's seen all of the rubble and he says, we've got everything that we need to do what needs to get done. Let's get after it. And then faith is where the people started to pick up those stones. They started to put them back where they needed to be. They started fitting the stones where they needed. They started going and getting the timber that they needed to rebuild the gates. They started to put it into practice. Folks, you can come to church and you can hear the word and you can read your Bible. But if you're not a doer of the word, your faith, your faith has no action. There is the hearing, but there's no arise and rebuild. There needs to be action in it. I've talked for quite a while this morning. It's what happens when you're gone for a couple of weeks. You, you got more that you want to share than maybe you, maybe you want to hear. I don't know. But I want to encourage us today that hope needs to be stirred again in our hearts that God is able to do and wants to do so much more in our life. What is the Spirit of God stirring in you right now? What needs to be rebuilt? Don't make, take it as a sense of condemnation. Don't take it as a sense of, oh, I don't want to have to do that. Let's take it like the people of Nehemiah's day and say, you know what? I do need to rebuild that area. I have become con uh, just used to the rubble in my life. I've become just, this stuff has become familiar in the condition that it is. And my life needs to be rebuilt. I need God to allow his, I need to allow God's word to be spoken into my heart so that faith comes alive on the inside of me. You know, when you receive the word, faith comes with that. If you receive the word of God in your life, faith comes with that word to transform and to change you, to start to build on the inside of you. It's, it, it starts to make a, a difference in our life. When we receive the word, just as when the people received the word through Nehemiah, it changed their perspective. Write these two words down, if you would, please. Perspective and purpose. We're getting ready to, to close here. But just because I'm done talking doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit's done working in your life. Perspective and purpose. 
When you allow the Holy Spirit to speak the word of God into your life, it starts to transform your life from the inside out. He starts to change our perspective. Perspective in Nehemiah's day, they were a defeated people. We can't do anything because the walls are torn down. We have no defense. The city gates have been burnt. The, well, there's no reason to try to re, re, restart the, the worship that we need to be doing in the temple because, because of this, because no walls, because of no gates, because of the enemy perspective. Nehemiah comes to town and he speaks the word and perspective starts to change. We can rebuild. We can do this. God has a purpose here. God needs to be glorified here. We have, we, our perspective starts to change or we start to see those things that used to be rubble now becomes building stones. Those things that used to be, well, uh, tore down or burnt up, we can say they can be replaced. They can be built back. Perspective starts to change what can be done, not what has been done. Let me ask in your life, what is your perspective on what God can do in your life? What is your perspective? Do you see it? Do you believe it? Perspective and purpose. When we allow the word of God to come alive on the inside of us, our purpose starts to change. It's not what about me. It's what about God. It's not about me. And please, don't, don't be offended. Allow the Holy Spirit to take this and, and bring it to you individually. I'm not, I'm not speaking to anyone in sp uh, particular. But I'm just saying, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you because it's so easy to be about me, my feelings, what's happened to me, what's going on, what others have done to me. I'm not, I'm not saying that any of that hasn't happened. I'm just saying that's not our purpose. Our purpose is living for the Lord. He saved me. He redeemed me. He has purchased me. I belong to him. I'm his servant, regardless of what anyone else has done to me. I'm a child of God. I have a purpose now. My purpose is not so me to, to have a comfortable life. My purpose is so that I can glorify God in my life. And if I'm living in a way that's not glorifying him, it doesn't matter whose fault it is. There'll be a day every one of us will stand before Jesus. There'll be a day every one of us will stand before the Father. There'll be a day every one of us, and, and you'll be there all by yourself. And the Father God will look at you and he'll say, what did you believe about my son? Who will be right there. What did you believe about my son? And the follow-up question will be, and what did you do? because of your belief. What did you do? Too many Christians are trying to live a better life in this life when we need to be living for eternity. And I'm preparing you for not just tomorrow, but I'm preparing you for when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father God. And I want you to be able to say, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I want you to say, I believe that He is, is my Savior. I want you to say, I believe He is my Lord. And I want you then to be able to follow that and say, these are the things that I did in His name. I don't want any of us to say, I made it. I want us to be able to say, I lived a life for His glory. I lived a life that was pleasing to Him. I want every one of us to be able to know him as our Savior, but also as our Lord in the way that we live our life. And that doesn't happen because just because you come to church. It happens because you have a relationship and a commitment to him. What we'll close with just simply this, folks. Maybe you need to rebuild your relationship with the Lord. I'm not saying you're lost. I'm not saying that you're, you're going to hell. I'm just saying your relationship with the Lord is not what it needs to be. And it needs to be built back. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you've been offended. Maybe you've been discouraged. Maybe fear has come into your life. Maybe the why, what about me? I don't know what it is. Maybe the success of this life has pulled you away. Maybe you've become too uh, uh, 
uh, uh, successful, that you don't need the Lord in your life. Everything's going wonderful. You've become so smart, so good looking, so, so influential that you don't need the Lord. And you need to rebuild that relationship. Nehemiah gave up a very, very cushy position to be able to go and to rebuild lives. Making sure that we're always available. Do we need to rebuild our, our, our life in relationship with Him? Do we need to ask ourselves the question, but also ask it in, in what way? What can I do? You know, there's two ways you can ask that question. What can I do? We can ask it in, what can I do? But the question is, what can I do? We can ask it in a way of, I can't do anything. Or we can ask it in a way, show me, God. What is it you want me to do? What is it that I'm supposed to be? What's my purpose and perspective? I can step back and say, what can I do? And so I just do my own thing. Or I can pause and I can say, Lord, what can I do? You know, we were just talking about Crystal and Caspa for service a day and missionaries over there ministering in the Philippines and that's wonderful. But folks, who's going to reach your neighbors? Who's going to reach the people that are right around you? Who's touching their lives? Who can do, you can do that in rebuilding the kingdom of God here on this earth. What are you doing? Are you receiving the voice of the Lord in your heart? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to, to cause you to be a catalyst for change in your life, in your home, your community? You can't stop what other people are doing, but we can make sure that we're doing our part for living for Jesus every day of our life in a way that He is glorified. The scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, we love the part that says that we're new creatures in Christ Jesus, old things that passed away and all things become new. We love that. But Paul goes on and says that every single one of us have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Rebuilding the relationship of people with God. We need to arise and rebuild. And it's going to take all of us to do what God's called us to do. Let's arise and rebuild in our hearts first of all. Simple faith and hope and his ability to work in us and through us. Then we can go from there as a church. There's some areas that we need to rebuild in. But folks, as we do so, that's how we're going to make an influence in our community and, and, and in this world. That we understand that there is an adversary that's going to try to come against us. Hell never likes what heaven's doing. Let's just be honest. But that's where we're going to have confidence in our God. That our resource it comes from the help of heaven, not from this world that is around us. Stand with me if you would as we simply have, hold this thought of arise and rebuild. Arise and rebuild. Or we stop and we just say my perspective needs to change from all of the, the devastation over this last couple of years that we can all blame it on whatever we want to blame it on and whoever we want to blame it on, but our our perspective needs to get back on God wants to do some incredible things through our lives. You're saved for a purpose, and he wants to fulfill that purpose in your life. Our purpose is to bring glory and honor to him. So, Father, we just pause at this moment. Repentance always prepares us for, for you to use us. And we thank you, Father God. Lord, we repent for just living our own life. We repent, Father God, for desiring just comfort and success over any personal sacrifice to do your will. Holy Spirit, we just ask for you to minister to us each individually. Lord, in my own life, so many times it's just been, well, what can I do? Instead of, Lord, here am I. What can I do? Show us who we can help. Show us how we can reach out beyond and touch lives and rebuild their hope. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are restoring faith and hope in our lives by leading us in your word. Thank you that you are restoring health in our physical bodies and our minds. Thank you that you are restoring relationships and, and building, dear God, in the kingdom, the, those things that are of necessity. Thank you that you are restoring the voice in the church 
your voice that speaks to us and through us in this day and age. We thank you, Lord, that you are restoring your prophetic voice that is guiding us and directing us, Lord, and speaking to us. Thank you that you are restoring the gifts and rebuilding, dear God, the, the gifts of the Spirit and the supernatural moving amongst us, Father God, in this day and age. We thank you, Father God, of what you want to do. We, we thank you for our past, but we, we don't look back to just the monuments of the past. We look forward to the movement of your Spirit in this day and this hour. And we give ourselves over to you. Rebuild what needs to be done in us. We receive the word of the Lord. And we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And to speak through us for your glory. Thank you, Father God, for this church and what you're doing here through us. For your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. I encourage you as you go home this week to, to think on that. Just ask the Holy Spirit, what area in my life do I need to arise and rebuild for your kingdom and for your glory? Amen? Amen. See you here Wednesday night. Important to be here. All, we do have a, a short members meeting for all members. If you just quickly go over, and the heat is on in the room this time. If you remember last time, it was a little chilly. You just quickly go over there. We'll have just a few moment member meeting. Um, goes over just how things went last year. And just important for you to know that and give God glory there. We love you. Thank you for being amazing people. And God bless you.